stamping friends. It's Jackie Ballhays from Clomp and Stampers. I have another really easy card to share with you today. Great card idea for those of you that are newer to card making or beginner stampers, but it's also a great way to use up your designer series paper. That's what we at Stampin' Up! call it, or sometimes we say DSP, but it really just means all that pretty paper you can find. And you know, I love using designer series paper as the focal point of my card makes it super easy. Just add a greeting and you've got a great handmade card to send to somebody. Now, I have lots of tips to share with you today as well. How to do a little bit of paper saving. You know, we all like to do that, get the most out of our paper. We're also going to talk about the cling mount stamps that Stampin' Up! sells. Now, they do come with what's called cling mount labels to put onto the stamp. I usually don't put them on there. It's kind of a personal preference, but I want to show you how to put the labels on the easy way um, so that if you do like labels on there, you'll know how to do it. And let's see, I'm kind of scan. Oh, and I'm going to show you how I share or store my designer series paper. A lot of people ask me that quite often. So let's go ahead and take a peek at that. So we kind of have a lot to do, even though I've got six. Well, actually, by the time we're done, we're at eight great cards to share with you that really focus just on adding a greeting to some beautiful paper and have a great card to send to someone. So I think we need to flip this camera down and get stamping. Now, like I said, I have a lot to share with you. If you saw my table here, there's stuff everywhere. But I want to start first so I can just kind of set this aside by showing you this absolutely, this is my favorite, that why, why it's on the top, um, beautiful designer series paper. This is called, and I always forget the names of all of these, Flower and Field. This is actually free paper. During the rest of the month through the end of February, if you place a $50 order, you get to select a free celebration item. And this is one of those items. So it's been one of the most popular ones. So hopefully by the time you go to place an order, it's still available because um, there are limited quantities on it, but it is stunning. Love this. So we're gonna go ahead, flip it over. You can see the back. You know, a little fun tidbit to share with you. When Stampin' Up! creates papers like this, they actually hand paint them. The artist paint these um, sometimes on great big boards, sometimes on smaller boards, and then they actually use the computer to make sure the colors are absolutely correct, but it's kind of fascinating. You know, those of you that joined us last month for our quarterly Creative 8 retreat, we had one of the guest designers from Stampin' Up! Um, join us. Oh my gosh, it was so fascinating because she explained the whole process as to how they make these um papers. So when you see Stampin' Up! paper, if it looks hand-painted or hand-drawn, it probably was. So just a cool fun tidbit. Now, I told you I'd tell you how I store my paper. I got these sleeves years ago off Amazon. So I don't have the link. I don't know what they're called. But if you search 12 by 12 paper files or paper holders, it's just a sleeve. Okay, Actually, it says Cropper Hopper on the bottom. So that must be the brand name on them. But then you can slide in. They A package of paper fits perfectly. So once I open it up, I put it in there. But I want to show you what I do on the back. You know, there's so many coordinating colors, especially with this one, with the paper. And I don't know about you, but my old eyes have a hard time seeing this little print right there. So I just take a Sharpie and I hand write all of the colors that this paper coordinates with. That way, when I go to make cards, it's super easy to see what I need. But love these little um, file pockets, I guess we'll call them. So that's how I store my paper. Now, let's go ahead and let's start putting a card together and then I'm going to show you my tips for putting your labels on your cling mount stamps as well as some tips for getting your images straight because I know that can be a struggle. Now, let's see here. I think we're going to start with this. I have everything pre-cut here. So I have a piece that is three and three quarters by five. Now, don't worry about these measurements because over on my website, I'll have a blog post that will show pictures of all the cards I'm going to share with you today, as well as what I call the card recipe, which really just means the rest, you know, the cutting directions and all the sizes of all the layers, along with the list of supplies I use. So try to make it as simple as I can for you. And like I said, we are gonna make some really easy cards. So we are gonna layer this onto a piece that's just an eighth of an inch bigger. So it's five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And I like to use my liquid adhesive, um, my adhesive of choice. Just don't put too much on because you don't want it to goosh. 
and is that a word goosh <laughs> but i'm going to layer it onto a piece of basic white now people don't always think about layering onto white okay um actually you know what i forgot to show you my paper saving trick i was going to do so you know what i have another video coming up on friday i'm going to share it on that one instead so there you go you better subscribe so that you get my next video to catch my paper saving trick oh so, there we, we've wrapped or we've adhered it onto that layer and then i'm going to just use a piece of baker's twine um i like to add a little bow on my cards um, somebody said is that your signature thing and i'm starting to feel like it is um but i love baker's twine and i love linen thread and probably a couple reasons one it's pretty easy to tie i'm very bow challenged if you give me any ribbon that's pretty thick and stiff and heavy i can't tie a bow very well and also with baker's twine or linen thread it's not very bulky so even with putting this on here i shouldn't have any problem at all sending this through the mail so i always cut I like to double it and then I cut my pieces a little bigger than I need to again make it easy if you trim it too too short it's it's kind of hard so there we go we've just added our little bow on there and then we're gonna go ahead and use some adhesive and put this on to a piece of misty moonlight for our card base again this was a color I chose because it is the color in the designer series paper oh that's kind of crooked isn't it I'll slide that down um Give it a good rub, let that adhesive set on there, and that is ready to go. So let's just set that aside and bring in our stamps. We're gonna talk stamps here for just a second. Um, you guys have seen me use this set a lot, Happy Thoughts. It is the perfect stamp set to combine with any pretty designer series paper. And use let the paper do the work for the focal point of the card and then just add a greeting now we've got congratulations thank you thinking of you happy birthday so we could really make this into whatever kind of card we need to but before we do that i want to show you how to put these labels on because i get asked that quite often um the stamps will come like this you punch them out like i said i normally don't put labels on i tend to just stick them on my block they stick great we can use them like that but if you do want the label you can see i've put it on there all you need to do is take let's see what do we have here happy birthday take the back of your label sheet peel off these two pieces keep the label on that sheet now these labels are super sticky on both sides and they are not forgiving at all to the the side that you're going to put onto your stamp here so if you put it on crooked you're kind of stuck with it you cannot change it but what i like to do you see it has the perfect outline of the shape of the stamp so i look for an area that's pretty distinct so here we've kind of got this corner and i'm going to just set it on there best i can putting it right on that spot stick it right on there like that and then when we pick it up voila we have it stuck onto our stamp it is not coming off it's not moving and this is super sticky so if you like your stamps to be really sticky on your blocks this it's amazing other little tips sometimes i feel like they're almost too sticky put it on here i've stamped a bunch i've maybe even set it overnight sometimes you might this one's coming up really easy you might have a hard time picking it up over time the more you use them they kind of lose a little bit of that like overly super sticky but if you ever have a hard time this one fits so tight then you know you want to don't grab from the rubber you want to grab down there get that label you might have to even use a little a paper piercing tool or something to get it started so there's a couple of tips on putting your stamps together so let's set that aside and we are going to use thinking of you on our card so we're going to go ahead and just use black now the fun thing about this stamp set is it was sized right to coordinate with several different punches um, my punch of choice is the taylor tag tag punk the ah! taylor tag punch so we're going to just go ahead stamp it punch it out and then some here we go i have a piece of shaded spruce here we're going to punch one out of that as well and I like to layer this. Now I could go ahead and stick it right on there like that. But if you want to layer it, all you need to do, and you've probably seen me do this, punch another one, cut it in half. Um, scissors is fine, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be straight. 
and then just put a little tiny bit of adhesive on the top and what we're gonna do is essentially make a border on the top and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom. So we'll put a little bit of adhesive there, flip it over, and then we can stick that on there. Grab those dimensionals and we're gonna put them on the top and the bottom, um, which you know, it seems a little bit more logical to put them on the ends, but when you're putting it over a piece of ribbon or baker's twine, I like to go on the top and bottom because it doesn't always stick really good on top of that baker's twine. So this way we know we're sticking down right there. And there you go. There is the front of our Thinking of You card. Now we're going to go ahead and put a piece of Whisper White or Basic White. I um, We call it Basic White now, so and we want to put that on the inside. Now the beauty of this stamp set is that there are greetings for the inside of your card as well and they're pretty good size. You know sometimes things are so small. Now I kind of have this thing where it bothers me when greetings are crooked. Okay just a personal thing. So a tip that I use is when I'm sticking this on the block I will set my block using my grid paper. Now I don't want to put my head in here but I am lining up the top of my block of, on a line of the grid paper. So all these lines should be square on there. And then when I stick this down, I'm kind of looking at that image and looking through the block to see it down on you know those lines to try to make it square on the block. And then, because this bugs me so much, I will ink it up and I'll stamp on my scrap paper, again, lining up the block, okay, I lined up the block, top, bottom, side, whatever, onto the paper to see if that's stamped pretty straight. So it's another reason why I, I stamp on grid paper all the time, it lets me do that. And when I look at this, that's pretty darn straight. It's kind of tilting down just a little, little bit. So when I go to stamp on here, I will actually put my eyes on this edge along with the edge of my cardstock, and I'm gonna just tip it up on that right side, just a teeny tiny bit to adjust. Let's see here. And it should be pretty straight. I think that looks pretty good. So like I said, it was all about getting it straight on this block. You know, if I didn't like how crooked this was, I would take it off and I'd do that again until I knew I was square on my block. And then you can always square that block up on your cardstock to get a straight image. So, Okay, let's go ahead, choo -choo, put some adhesive on here. We'll stick it down like so and adhere that. And there we go. There is our Thinking of You card with that paper. Isn't that gorgeous? So as a reminder, this paper, you can't purchase it. It is only available for free. Now, let me show a few other examples. I did all of these cards the exact same way use just different images from that happy thoughts. So we have thinking of you, happy birthday. And again, we have a greeting that goes nicely in the side with happy birthday. Congratulations as well. We have got a greeting for the inside. Now some I use black ink, some here I use the jade, just jade to coordinate with it. I tend to use black ink most of the time. Every once in a while we'll switch it up. So here's another thinking of you. Um, with some words on the inside and then finally thank you and all i did you can see lots of different colors of cardstock here i just took different colors of cardstock that was in that coordinates with the paper and look at how easy those cards are but how nice they are now i do have a couple other ones to show you um, these are made really the same way. I showed these on my Facebook group the other day and I just cut these pieces a little bit smaller. I'll take photos of these and put them on that post as well if you want the sizes. But I just used my daisy punch and I doubled it to fill it in a little bit. And then I asked people, do you like the bow in the middle better or do you like the little champagne rhinestone? And it seemed to be pretty split, which kind of surprised me. I thought it would be, um, more one way or the other. So there's just two more cards that I'll have over on the blog with all the dimensions for you. 
So speaking of the blog or website, I kind of use that term interchangeably. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like a Stampin' Up! catalog, over there you can request one as well. Now, where do you find all this information? Right, I guess it'd be like right down there in the description of the video that you're watching right now will be a link that will take you over to that post over on my blog. And again, it'll have all the details, the measurements, the car recipes, a list of all the supplies I used and everything you need. And you can request a catalog there as well. So thanks for watching guys. I truly appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. I like to bring at least two videos. It's kind of my goal every week with quick and easy stamping for you. So reach out to me if you have any questions whatsoever. I'm here to help you make quick and easy cards. Have a stamp happy day.